I am Tracy Drain, and I am a card-carrying skeptic. When I was seven years old, my brother and my mother and my grandmother and I lived in this house that was about four blocks away from a candy store. You could go down two streets and down two other streets and you'd get right there. And it was this great old fashioned place where you could take a dollar and you could buy 10, 10 cent boxes of those little sugar coated sugar balls <laughs> that were lemon heads and Johnny apple seeds and sour cherries and all sorts of stuff. So whenever we got our hands on any kind of money, we would like to run over to the candy store and back. And my mom, even though I was seven and my brother was just two and a half years older than I was, and in those days you let kids run around way more than you do now, so she would let us go as long as we promised to go straight there and come straight back. And on this particular day, we went to the candy store and my brother found a lighter on the way that still had lighter fluid in it and was working. And we got to the candy store, we got our stuff, and we were about to come back, and my brother, being the very adventurous sort, wanted to go a different way and through the alley and go exploring and playing around. Around. And me, being the little goody two-shoes that I was, was telling him, no, we have to go straight back home. We're going to get in trouble. And to persuade me, he said, well, if you go that way, the snakes are going to get you. But I have this, and they're afraid of this, so you better come along with me. And I'm like, okay. So I went along with him, and we got up to all sorts of no good. By the time we got home, so much time had passed that of course my mother was super mad and knew that we hadn't come straight home like we were supposed to. And of course I'm tripping all over myself telling her it's not my fault, I wanted to come straight home. He said the snakes were going to get me and he had this lighter so of course I couldn't go by myself. <laughs> and my mother tells me that she was going to punish my brother for lying and for doing the wrong thing but I was going to get punished too for being stupid stupid enough to believe him and do what he wanted me to do. And I remember as a seven-year-old just being flabbergasted, A, at the unfairness of it all, and B, that I was expected as a little kid to use my own brain to determine whether what something was telling me was true or not. But I know the lesson she was teaching me is that you have to be responsible for believing the things that people tell you and using your own mind to fact check them even when you're young and think you think everyone around you is supposed to be telling you the truth. Go for it. When I was in middle school, I carried a purse like a lot of girls my age and one time I couldn't find it. And I just knew 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt that the person who had taken it was this very shady kid who was kind of an outcast, he wore a trench coat all the time, he carried around this duffel bag, nobody ever knew what was in it, and I just knew he had it. And so I went up and confronted him about it and I'm like, you know, Kyle or whatever his name was, you took my bag, give it back. And he of course said, no I didn't but he had this very shy, retiring attitude that to me ran read completely as guilt, guilt, guilt. And so that just ratcheted up my sureness even more and I went to go get a teacher. So I went to grab a teacher and I brought them back and I'm like, you know, Kyle took my purse, I'm sure it's in his bag, can you just look in there, he won't let me look. And the teacher said no. And I'm sure in the back of my mind I had some kind of understanding of privacy rights or whatever, but I felt in this case I was so sure he had it that could not possibly have applied. And it was just beyond me that they wouldn't take the simple step and look in his bag and prove that he had it. I was more mad than I'd ever been about anything in my entire life, right? And then later on that day, I actually found my purse and it was in a place that triggered some memories. I knew I had been there and it was probably me who just left it there. And it was horrifying to have been so completely sure about something and so, so, I just knew this kid was guilty. The fact that he wasn't and it was just a mistake on my part all along was intensely embarrassing. I don't even think I ever went to him and apologized. So if you're watching and the story is familiar, I'm so sorry about that. But that was a, a really important lesson for me that your own internal sense of surety when it isn't based on any fact isn't always right. I'd like to wish Skeptics Magazine a happy 25th anniversary. Thank you for watching. Check us out at skeptic.com and support our mission to promote science and critical thinking at Patreon.